welcome back everybody <laughs> we have the wonderful modern day maestro Iolo Paolo Botaro and the beautiful counselor Lena Messina and myself the Sicilian Queens sharing <laughs> goddess and goddesses sharing the one story of Iolo and goddess, goddess. today we're going to talk about Isidi the beautiful sculpture that Eolo restored from new. You, was it from new you started it back new? Yeah, it wasn't a restoration. It was a, it was a re, recreation of a something. A recreation. That so we're going to talk from the start. Let's tell us a bit of the story about her. Right. And, yep. to, yep. and then we'll talk a bit about what you did in Polizzi. And then we'll talk how actually the two of us you weren't there, but then I got to see her when you just finished her. Yeah, I went off, yeah. So tell us a um, bit about who Isadi is. Okay, Isadi, in a way, she's a... Uh, the name Isadi, she's almost a fictional char char a character that she got given that name in a document. Um, but I'll go a little bit f uh, further, further back. Um, Basically, within uh, this small town that we mentioned in the in the last episode, Politi Generosa, um, there there was a tale, uh, or not a tale. There was a there was a real story of a statue that was destroyed by a bishop from Chefalu. Um, now, uh, in modern times, nobody saw this statue because she was obviously destroyed, um, but a document was produced and uh, an etching or an engraving was produced um, that pretty much gave us an idea of what she possibly looked at. Whether the drawing was done directly from the statue or done, my belief is it was done from memory a bit later um, with descriptions and so forth. Anyhow, it was detailed enough um, uh, to give people an idea of what she looked like. Uh, but the reason why she got given the name Isidè is because, uh, like all of Sicily, um, you had the Phoenicians and you had the Greeks and so forth. And I think in this particular uh, region, you had the Phoenicians up, up, up on the top. And basically there were, you know, the towns that exist today as medieval sort of um, towns uh, were actually like, set of cools and so forth with temples and so forth. So there's even a street within Polisigen also called Via Isida and so forth. So, so most likely there was a, a temple, I'd imagine, in, in the region or several temples, um, you know, votive things. It was just like having the Madonna, really. Like, you know, they even say that St Agatha from Catania, her origins are Isida. You know, it's an evolution. Of, yeah, it's pretty intense when you... Anyhow, I didn't want to bog myself too deep down into that because I needed to freshly approach uh, the recreation of the statue as a new vision of her as well. Um, but at the same time, I had to be very truthful to the icon, iconography that she had. You know, the, the emblem, she had a little triangular emblem with a flower. She was holding what looked like... Many people say a tamborino or a mirror or a jewel. No, nothing is um, concrete on who she was, yeah. but with the, along with the myth, the Isidè name sort of became the Isidè of Polizzi sort of thing. Uh, so so that, that's kind of her origins. And, and they say that prior to her being destroyed, she was found in a pozzo, in a well, um, and then she was put on display in the Chiesa Madre, the main church, for 100 years without an issue. And apparently the women, um, uh, you know, would uh, visit her. Uh, there, there were, you know, again, the, this is secondhand, you know, more than secondhand information. It's like, that, you know, they, they would visit her if they were pregnant or something like that. She was a deity that... that and the peculiar thing about this particular statue that struck me immensely because I've never seen anything like it is the fact that she had three form three faces she had like a, a young character she had her as a protagonist 
and she had an old man. And they were all, um, and then uh, just a female body. So not three bodies, because three bodies would take you to Hector, which is a, a Greek goddess that has three, three bodies. Um, and then there's a two form as well. Uh, so, so again, jumping back to the last episode, that we spoke about that connection and that longing and that looking for something of Sicilianality. Um, I was completely open. I, I was eating, I was devouring Sicily. I was open to everything and I was, I was letting it lead me and it was boom. I got brought to this, never sculpted on that scale, done little things. Wow. So um, I convinced a town and patrons that I was going to, after 300 years of her destruction, give her back. So, again, going back to the other episode when we stop, say about... Stop, stop, stop. I'm taken, I'm taken by that. That has completely... <laughs> freaked you out. <laughs> freaked me out. Because you've gone back to a story where somebody, I don't understand why the bishop did that, um, destroyed yeah. her, and here mm. comes Mr, you know, Mr Botaro from Melbourne, Preston, comes across to this Sicilian town, gets seduced by this statue, and you have yeah. this bull. You were seduced. Yeah. You have a yeah. bull Got it. <laughs> to bring her back to life. That's, yeah. that's a love story. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. The Pulitzani saw me every night and they're like, you spend too much time with that. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask you, I'm, I'm a bit intrigued about the three heads. Do you think that old man represents the wisdom and maybe perhaps it's three different layers of her growing up and what she had to share? Why do you think the three faces? Look, in my research on a technical level, like we, we un, you know, started to unveil uh, the possibilities of where she fit in historically and, and prudence was one of them. And, and prudence is represented normally with two faces and a mirror looking behind you. Okay. So, so, so there there's just three forms. And, um, but there's also like a Tiziano painting um, that has a, uh, it has a, uh, a fox, a lion, and a and a wolf. The three Ooh. phases of life. You know, in middle age, you're a bear. Oh, sorry, you're a lion. When you're young, you're you're foxy. You know, you're sort of like trying trying get away <laughs> with shit, killing the chickens. And <laughs> and then obviously, as you're older, you're foxy. You've you've been if you've survived, you've been there. You're a wolf. So, yeah. so my strong belief is. That um, that time uh, governed by prudence is is a, is a definite uh, connection to this sculpture. They're the three phases. What's peculiar about her is that it's not an old lady, but it's an old man. Man. And this one here is what's the word? Indo androgynous. You know, it's neither yeah, neither neither a hermaphrodite, neither male or female. Yeah. So. And when you when you do create something out of clay form, do you become the person or do you watch the person in it? So you're either encapsulated by her beauty or you watch her as watching a movie. So do you become her or do you watch her? It's a good question. I, I, my feeling from my experience, and this is how I now work all the time, is the piece, even the piece or the object, even though yet doesn't exist, does exist. The, the matter is, um, the matter is put through me and I have to assemble it. Um, and everyone that would come in there would say, bravo, maestro, you're, you're a may, my God, da, da, da. is this your first? Is this? I said, guys, to tell you the truth, I am not driving this. I, and you might think I'm silly, but I'm not the driver in this situation. Possibly yeah. I'm guiding. That's and why I asked so, the question. I was curious or, yeah. you know, it may, it I sound, wanted to know, yeah. It may sound all mystic or whatever the hell, but I'm just telling you the truth of 
I yeah. never sculpted. Well, it was, a, it, it was a time in life where this statue stood still in, in how many hundreds of years? How old Three. was she? How old? 300, so 300, 300 years. 300 years, she stood in the well, in the church, she was broken, but it was a gap in time where life waited for you to come along. Yeah, yeah. well, I had to take it with that point of view. I had to take it because you can imagine also, like, who the hell am I coming in to a town where I know nobody? Because I knew nobody. Yeah. I was just very fortunate because of fate or whatever the hell you want to call yeah. it yes. that I met the people at the Sicilian house, which Carmela brings you and I together, um, and that that they were Australian. And and without that, that then reiterates the Australian Sicilian. It's all, it's all a connection. It's like she's staying there, waiting there, and all of them, everything divinely. The, your your path is slowly evolving, evolving, evolving. My path is slowly evolving. Lena's path. And then all of a sudden it's like an intertwined a connection and it's saying, now we need to let these people meet, you know, and, and each one is going to be part of this. Yeah, yeah. Like Suzanne yeah. and Gaetano from the Sicilian house. Oh, huge, huge. huge. Um, that you stay let's there. talk about him. So he, he, had a link to, he had a link to Australia. So how did you meet and what happened? Okay, on that, on that, let's let's say it like a tale like this. On that fateful day, it sounds like Gilligan's Island. <laughs> on that fateful, I I managed to have yeah, a meeting. I managed to have a meeting with the syndicate. Uh, oh, sorry. On that fateful day, I have to go back. I managed. Uh, I was I was in the museum. Oh, sorry, sorry. Now we go back to the documentary, which but you have to just bear with me. I visit Pulitzi by pure accident. No, it's not. Fate, fate, fate. destiny. The road, the road between Palermo and Catania uh, had crumbled and I had to do a detour. So I end up, I know you're, you're laughing, Lena. I love already. this. I love this. <laughs> and and it's, 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 this is genuine. This is no bullshit. Uh, I do a detour. I... I say, oh, well, come in Frege, you know what I mean? I'm going to stay one night and visit a town. I said, this is the longest detour I've ever taken. Because it started, <laughs> winding, you know, the windy roads go down. It started going, and it was foggy. as a, And this medieval town appears to me only the next day because I couldn't even see it because it was in cloud. And I, I wake up. And the first thing I do in every Sicilian town is I wear, well, first I have the cornet and the cafe. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I say, I said, you know, where's your local museum? And then I was like, my God, look at the collection. that Because you're always surprised. You do not know what is... The place is a Pandora's box of treasure. You know, that, and you're the only one in the museum, always. You're, you're, so it's always... It's, it's not like being in Florence and it's being pillaged and raped by tourism. You're, you're having the personal experience almost individually by yourself. Anyway, I'm in there and I do all the museum and then she pops up as an image. And this, and I, and I was struck by the three faces and it was the little drawing that was in the uh, original documents um, when she got destroyed. And then I asked, you know, I asked the, the attendant there and it just, boom, I said, I have to make her. It just was like, it was an instant. I, I can't explain it. It happened instantly. And I spoke to her. She put me onto the syndical. I had a meeting with the syndical because you can do that stuff in Sicily. And they, you can do it hand. here. You can do it here too. You can do it here. Yeah, on a different level. You can actually <laughs> but, um, have a coffee with the syndical. You can have dinner with them, lunch with them. They're yeah. just wonderful. They sat with the mayor and the deputy mayor. Come on. <laughs> he, he was very, very amicable and, uh, and you know, being a politician too, he just said yes to everything. And I said, uh, <laughs> and I shook his hand, Lena. I shook his hand. And I thought he thought when I left, because Eolo means the wind. 
Oh, does he, it? Yeah. He's gone. He's out of here. We'll never see him again. It took me two years to get back to that town to do it, but I came prepared. You know, I, I returned. And they were like, shit, he's back. But anyway. Turnau, turnau, turnau. Turnau. Anyhow, I, the, going back to meeting Gaetano and Susanna from the Sicilian house was basically related to, after that, I went for a walk. And there was a tabello. Oh, geez, my chair just sunk. There was a tabello. <laughs> there was a tabello on the um, on the wall, and it said in English the the Sicilian house. Um, and I thought, oh, Sicilian wouldn't put something so English. I took a photo. I gathered my thoughts, went back to Ragusa, and then I I started googling. And when I put in the Sicilian house, Susanna appeared, and she had all these blogs and her beautiful writing about Sicily and and I just went, oh, I just simply wrote a letter about my idea, about re... Because uh, the syndical then took me to the library and gave me the original document. I couldn't understand it. It's like 18, uh, 17th century Italian. But they said, here is everything. And I held on to these things for two years with me everywhere. And I started researching. And it was two years of research before I sculpted. So, and then I put myself on the line. Like, I decided if she's going to be created, it's going to be in an open studio in the main uh, stretch of the... Wow, of the, open studio. Open, all, all the time. How, how she, tall does she sat, stand? She's, she's, not a big, she's not a big statue. She's very petite, but she... She's the scale of my partner, Serena's sister of the time, because I used her as my measuring. <laughs> like, a, you know, she stands, I think, what is it, about 130 or something like that? Oh, I'm not th- that. Yeah, yeah. Like a She's shorter girl. than me. <laughs> yeah. She's shorter than me. <laughs> <laughs> so she's not, because also I think in the original document she was smaller but I didn't want to do her too. I wanted her yeah. to have a bit more of a presence because I was not out to, because a lot of, I got a bit of criticism at one point by some of the historians saying he should reproduce her as she was. I said, how do you know how she was? She was destroyed in thousands of pieces by the bishop. We don't know what she was and I'm no. not out of respect to art as well. I will create her the way she will create herself. So that's what I did. And, and, and looking at the footage, it was immensely detailed. Um, your fingers, no, no, I watched your fingers. They guided you. I, I, that's what I got from that footage. They guided you to all the curves, all the nicks, the crannies, the, the, the way that you used your fingers to make her was exquisite just watching you and watching your hands be guided to create that form and i thought the video did a lot of um complimentary work on to show oh, your uh, your your eyes in, in creation. Really in creation. Yeah. yeah yeah he was amazing he was he was everyone became crucial to this because I, I allowed everyone in because a lot of artists don't allow people in you know they it's very you know, this is this is the closed doors, of studio. Um, with this instance, she was also being created because of the town's people who missed her yeah. so much. And even the ones that didn't know that this story even existed, they took it on like uh, it, there were there was an and you know Sicily and those small towns have suffered a hell of a lot in the past. Well, forever. Um, that you know, I sort of felt like. I didn't know Polizzi. They say, "Come if you came to Polizzi 10 years ago, we were alive and we were in action and this and that and now it's died and this. I didn't know. I just saw a, I saw a town that was very tired and sleepy and um, I said, you know, uh, but that they, they, they took me on and they still do today like a son. There's no doubt about it. Well, you're I part am, of the town now. Yeah, it's You're part strange. Of the town, what you did for the town, you actually resurrected the town. You you created more of a different the economy, the revenue. People come up now to see her. Yeah, you've yeah. given it a pulse. You basically have given her, given the the town a pulse, it, and that pulse 
that you resonate within you is now in the statue. So she's the pulse of the city. Yeah. Well, you know, like I think there's so much more that's, you know, always you think there's so much more that can be done. Um, but I guess things move a bit slower there. And, uh, yeah, that was my intention too is um, to also show that from nothing you can create something. And, and because too often you speak to the young Sicilians and they've already given up, you know what I mean? They're, they're like talking to a vecchio. I'm yeah. like, I shouldn't be the one the coppola. You should be wearing the coppola. You know what I mean? <laughs> like I said, the coppola came from nothing. You know, I started a business from nowhere and I said, and, and I kind of did it also to prove a point at one point through through just family members and that I said, watch how I can find something here and 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 create that. And because there's so much to give, as you guys know, from Sicily. There is so much. It's almost too much. There's too much. It's Any intense. good shoemakers? I want I want some nice shoes. <laughs> shoe the shoe there's a there's like young people that are getting back into shoemaking. Um, so there's definitely avenues. What you want, you will find in Sicily. I can tell you that. Uh, the old, wait. the old shoemakers, they're they're now all, they're all dying, and they they were the real artists. And I met I met a few. You know, I met the guy that used to make my mum's shoes. And the the fir, uh, going back to the the Coppola uh, in my mum's town. Um, there was a Sarto, he's now dead, and he died whilst I was there. And I went there because I wanted to make the, I think, Lena, I sent you an image of a vest, or I think... A, yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to make a, a new version of the Sicilian vest without losing the, you know, the traditional look. And, and I did research, and I even went to the Museum of Clothing and calculated how many, how many buttons and all that sort of jazz. Anyway, I went to the Sarto, and I said, I need you to make me the first man. And everyone said to me, Elo, he's old. Don't go to him. It's going to take you months. But I did it out of respect because I said, the first vest has to be made by this guy uh, to give me the permission to do what I have to do. So I must be a little bit mystic in that sense. He, that was his last item of clothing he made. He died after oh that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And, um, and look, oh, Jesus. <laughs> every time, have you noticed that every time you speak about that? <laughs> I'm going to fall off. Fall off. off. Okay. But it's not, okay. So, so anyway. Yeah. Let's talk uh, about, let's talk oh, about yeah. how you and I, were yes. at the same time. You 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 weren't were you Ooh. in Polizzi when I was in Polizzi? You weren't. You you went back no, to I'm, nonnas. Yeah, I either went back to nonnas or I'd finished yeah, I, I can't I don't know exactly where or I could have come back to Australia. There was a possibility that I came back to do the work in Australia and our timing wasn't there. But we kind of met through social media, am I correct? <laughs> And you told me about the book that you'd read of Vincent Scavelli, correct? That's right. So what happened for me was that I met you because you were doing, you were doing, I think you were still, you were doing a Coppola. You were, you were in the city. You were doing still the stuff with the, with the Coppola. And I said to you that I watched a documentary on Vincent Scavelli, the American right. actor who was born in, Polizzi. His, yeah. no, he wasn't born. His grandfather was born in Polizzi and he migrated to the States. And then yeah. Vincent Chevalli had lung cancer, was diagnosed with lung cancer and returned back to um, the town and stayed in the town. And for me, Polizzi was like calling me because then I met you when you were, start, you were starting to mm -hmm. do the Is the, um, It Project. And then I met Suzanne. So it was three things in one that were called connected. connected and they were all connected. We were all connected. Suzanne, yeah. Gaidano, Vincent, yeah. Chiffley, you. And because when I, when, I when I went to Polizzi and the first thing I did was I said to, I stayed at the Sicilian house where Suzanne and Gaidano have, um, I said to Maria and Giuseppe, is she here? 
and she was in the garage. <laughs> garage, <laughs> garage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I must have been in the exactly. garage. And so yeah, yeah. Um, Maria opened up the, the the garage, and I just saw her. <laughs> I was like, must be quite surreal. Oh, she was just calling me. I said to her, You are absolutely gorgeous. I saw the old man, her, the young boy. I finally get to see you. You just, I was mesmerized by this beautiful creature that was centuries old and just being rebirthed by you. And then the next day, I meet, I've got Serafino and Nino yeah. at the door wanting to take me where Vincent Chiavelli's <laughs> apartment is. And I'm, <laughs> Vincent Chiavelli, no one's been allowed in there since he died. And that was 10 something, 15 years ago. And Sarah yeah. takes me in there and he goes, Carmela, so tu vou cuchinar a cardincha, tu vou cuchinar, tu vou cuchinar, tu And he doesn't, he didn't yeah, let me cook. I'm gonna bring people, he goes, yeah, yeah, bring them, bring them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he yeah. takes me to his house and cooks me dinner with Nina. And I'm thinking, I don't know these people from anywhere. And they take yeah. me to, to spend an evening with them. And Giuseppe and Maria, did you, by the way, did you eat at Obayu? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, can't, I can't count how many times I ate at Obayu. Yeah, I ate it ev everywhere you could eat. Nina, when yeah. we go to Sicily, we oh, have to lady. eat there because the lady, her name is Santina and her husband's name is Andrea. She's a big, busted, beautiful lady. She <laughs> like it. She she's while she's cooking, but she is absolutely. She, your palate dances. It has a oh, dance when you eat. Party in your and mouth. You, yeah. And you don't want to leave there. You're mesmerized. It is a mess. I'm actually honestly afraid of going to Sicily you and not to wanting back. to come back and not coming back. Oh, uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard because there's, there's an amazing appeal but to there's it. There's a part yeah. of you that is from yeah. there. That's our, that's our, our terra madre. That's our mother. Yeah, it is. That's what I call it, terra we madre. Want, we want to. We want a part of us wants to stay there, but we know that our calling and our life is here. So if we can Everyone. build two worlds, and emerge yeah. to the and two kingdom, alive. the two kingdom of Sicily, Melbourne and Sicily. Well, very much it very much I reckon we're going to stop this recording too, and go into okay. the next one because it's a bit there. It's longer, so what do I say? What's the next one? So you want to tell everybody what the next episode is, Carmela? What are I we going to focus on? I think we're going to talk a little bit more about. Uh, about Isidy because we, we really didn't get into it because you had Giovanni help you as well, didn't you? Yeah, 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 I did. I, well, yeah, okay. we saw, yeah. And then yes, we'll okay, let's do that. And then we'll go into the Essendon the project. Essendon project. Let's do that. Yeah, well, yeah. Thank you, Eolo, so much Grazie. for sharing your story with us and taking us into the journey with you. It's, it's, it really is a wonderful. Experience. Thank you, guys. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone, thank you. for listening in. And you know what? Get Stay tuned because you're going to have another it's glass of three. <laughs> and you're going to get Stay tuned and you're going to enjoy <laughs> the next episode with Absolutely. Maestro Eolo Paolo Butero. 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 Butero.